All right, we are recording. Good morning. Hello. How are you guys? Welcome to our Saturday morning Team Aloha coach gathering to discuss the business and opening the floor for anyone that has a share that's exciting in their life. Um, Melissa, I know last week you said, you know, the adoption, you might be, so is there any news on that or no, same? Um, we actually did get another call and it's, it's looking very, very probable. Um, the girl is still very, very interested in us and she's still very committed to placing her baby. You know, a lot can change between then and now, um, you know, cause it's in July, but, um, we may be meeting her at the end of March. So we are excited about that. So it's moving forward. Awesome. Yeah. That's, super yeah. that's like right around the corner. It'll yeah. be <laughs> I know. <laughs> Congratulations. We'll keep us posted. As you I will. Through. Thanks for asking. Through the process. And uh, Marty has just shared that she just got a puppy, a little husky, seven weeks old. She's exhausted and she's in the car so she doesn't bother <laughs> the household and wake everybody up. Congratulations. That's awesome. Anybody else have good news to share or something they're struggling with? Hi, Steph. I'm not sure who's on the 615 number, but someone's calling in on the phone. So, okay. So um, then if we don't have any shares, I thought that, I'm not sure if you guys listened to that national wake up call from Kim Fitzpatrick. Okay. So um, what I wanted to do is first of all, open up the floor and see if anyone wants to share like what, <laughs> Really, I think that the hardest thing to do as a new coach is figure out what to say. Like, you're like, what do I say to get them enrolled, right? But the thing that I loved about that call with Kim Fitzpatrick is it wasn't about like, what do I say? What's the right thing? It's about listening, asking questions and listening to what um, they have to say and what their needs are so you can find the solution for them. And the five-step process that was like the original Beachbody way of doing things. I have one, I have a copy of it, but, and I sent it, I sent it to my new coach, Jana recently. And I was thinking, you know what, this is so outdated. It is extremely like the explanation of what you get in the package is like extremely long because you do it in five steps. And what's crazy is that I, w I happened to be talking with this girl who had responded to my poll about maybe wanting to join my tribe at some point later on. And she was like, so can you tell me more about what you do? Or I think I wrote to her, she responded like maybe later. And I wrote something along the lines of like, what makes you not want to get started now? Like why, you know, why not now? And she basically said it was financial. And then she asked me, but can you give me the information anyway? And I'm like, okay, cool. So I just did voice text and I explained to her, you know, this is, this is everything you get in your package. And I explained about the accountability, the fitness, the nutrition, you know, Shakeology, if she wants pre-workout or post-workout. And I always emphasize the accountability community because they can buy these products anywhere, but what they're getting with you is they're getting a coach who's going to hold them accountable in an online group that's going to hold them accountable and support them along the way. And she responded and she's like, Oh, well, thank you so much for like the information. Thanks for letting me hear your voice. You know, what's funny is I had another coach reach out to me and I asked for information and she just sent me this long, like written message explaining everything that came in the package. And I'm like, you know what, there's a time, like I can't judge them because there was a time when I did I did that too, because I had this like process of, you know, that I would take people through and I would get ghosted all the time after like the step four, because the step four like explains everything you get in your package. But the reason I would get ghosted is because I didn't make enough of a connection with the person and listen to them and really get to know them before I sent that message. You know, no problem. I mean, and the other thing too is, is that if you're not really showing you know, the value on your page, which I like Kim mentioned, if you're not really being consistent with showing your value as a coach on your page and in your stories, then it's going to be harder for you to sell the value of the program. So that's why like being consistent on your page and showing up on your social media is not so that you can get people. It's so that you can show people what you're really doing, the value of what you have going on and attract them to your program. Um, it's not like, oh, I'm going to get them. You know, I hate that. Like saying I'm going to get them. <laughs> and I did that when I was a new coach too. So anyway, I don't know if you guys listened to that call, but what I wanted to do was open up the floor and say, is there anyone that wants to share something that's really working for them? Like a newer coach in conversations to get 
to the point of making an invitation to join your tribe and then you know sharing what it is that you think is the solution for them because if not i can share what i do and also i can go over a little bit of what she shared on that call because i know sometimes people i took like copious notes on that call because i thought it was amazing it was just so streamlined the process that she did so does anyone ha have something to share recently like a conversation that they had that went well and something that's working for them I don't have a conversation that I'm going to share, but just something that I shared in my team that I thought was helpful to understand more of like the getting to know people. Um, like I shared an analogy about, you know, if you were talking to someone, you're like, hey, like, you know, have you ever thought about going to Florida? And they're like, yeah, no, I've never been, but I've always wanted to go. Great. Do you want to get in the car? I'm actually going right now. Like, you'd be like, what, a uh, creeper? No. But if you get to know someone and you've been talking to them for like a month and then you're like, you know, we talked about Florida like a couple weeks ago and like, I don't know, I'm just really having a lot of fun connecting with you. Like, I'm actually planning a trip, you know? I mean, like, if you get to know someone, it makes a difference. Like, yes, people are interested in getting healthy, but they're not interested in getting into a car with a complete stranger unless they're taking an Uber. But, <laughs> you know, I mean, so that's, that's where I think people are missing. Um, like I know some of my coaches have shared conversations where they they're doing really good with like the yes questions. Like, you know, do you think that this would be helpful in your journey? Yes, yes, yes. Awesome. Like you want to join my group for $160 and it's like, it's still a brand new person that you don't know. So like, yes, they're interested in going to Florida. Yes. They're interested in all the attractions, but not with you because you're still a stranger. And so taking that time to, to get to know them, like what's your common ground? Do they have kids? Do you have kids? Um, like finding that common ground is so, so important. And I think a lot of times we skip that and we just get excited that they're interested and we jump to the invite. So I just wanted to share that. That's a good analogy. I like that. And it, it's like Danielle Natoni, I remember once said, it's like, would you invite this person to your birthday party? Like, don't invite them to your challenge group until you feel like you would invite them to your birthday party. Now, I think that's a little bit, like, much because I wouldn't invite many people to my birthday party. <laughs> like, I'd invite, like, three people to my birthday party, so they'd have to be, like, really close with me. But I understand what she's saying. Like, you want to make sure that you're making that connection with someone, and I like that, too. Um, I, <laughs> and my, sorry. I'm drinking my Shakeology. The other thing is, though, is that your your what how you're showing up on your page is enhancing how much they know you. So if you're actually showing your authentic self and being personal on your page and not just saying, "Oh, here's me after my workout. I did my T25 or T20, and I'm posting my sweaty selfie," but like posting more about yourself, like why are you doing this? Like what is attracting you to this? What are you getting out of the community that you join? Like sharing value. I'm gonna mute everyone by the way um so that when you're ready you can just unmute yourself and you want to talk um and also not just what you're showing on your page but are you going to their page are do they post stories are you watching their stories are you like looking at who they are on their page and checking out some of their photos and liking and commenting on instagram it's really easy to go to somebody's page and see whether you're a good fit for someone i mean if you were like befriending someone on instagram if you were like just 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 solely going in it for friendship, not to invite somebody to a challenge group or to become a coach on your team, how would you go about doing that? Like if you were lonely in a new place and you had no friends, you just moved somewhere and you didn't know anyone and you were going on Instagram, you're like, you know what, let me just see if I can meet some new people on here, some, some people that I can socialize with. What would you, how would you do that? You would go and you would look for people that were like you and you would comment on their posts and you would like their posts and you would look at their stories and you would engage on their page. It's the same thing with, you know, this. It's, and so I, I think that if you're not going to their page and engaging on their posts and, and, and looking at their stuff, you're also doing them, you're doing yourself a disservice because you're not learning as much about them as you could. You're also showing them that you're not really interested in them. You're just interested in them being interested in you. <laughs> Does that make sense? Like I go about this in a very natural way. Like the pages that I'm attracted to, people that I feel like, oh, I could see them being a good, you know, coach on my team, or I could see them being a client, or I could see them being a friend or whatever. I engage on their page. I go to their page. I look at their stuff. I like their stuff. I, I watch their stories if they have them. I give them, it's easy to give them a little, you know, smiley face with hard eyes or a little heart or a clap, you know, to their stories. 
it's like the same thing with like Marty and I, like we're engaging on each other's, you know, we're getting closer too because I'm watching her stories and I'm seeing more about her and she's watching my stories and she's seeing more about me and we're learning more about each other from watching the stories. So I think it goes both ways. And when you show them, when you do authentically go and engage on their page and you're showing them that you are interested in them. So I think that's an important piece that a lot of people are missing when they're just like having that conversation. Like I'm guilty of it when I was at like, and I, maybe I still do it now. I don't know. But like where you have someone reach out to you and you don't even look at their page, you're just like, talking to them in a message and you don't even go and see who they are. Like, I think that you're doing both yourself and them a disservice if you don't check out their page and know who they are. So that's my um, first thing, but all right. Um, does anyone else have anything to share or a conversation that went well or somewhere that it, it reached a dead end that you want some feedback on or you don't even know where to get started and you're just ready to hear the information that I have to share today? I'm having success with the voice messaging instead of just trying to type everything out. I really like what you said there is right on the money. I no longer type out a big long thing of this is what the package is. I voice message and I explain it to them. And I did have a girl sign up at the end of January, you know, through that instead of like, normally it was hard for me to get people to sign up when sending all that long stuff, writing it out. And um, so, yeah, that works really well. And I'm also starting to use messaging to connect with people instead of just typing to them. Oh, I see you're a boy mom too. Sometimes I'll just, you know, Hey, I see you're a boy, you know, whatever. Great to connect on Facebook and that, you know, use that kind of thing. So it works. And I'm going to, I'm going to let you guys know that also, thank you for sharing that, Melissa. Um, side note, I have seen that sometime when I use voice messaging on Facebook or on Instagram for whatever reason, sometimes it doesn't work. Like they're like, I, I see that you have, I have an audio message from you, but I can't play it. So what I'm going to test to that is, are you creating a list of names? Are you creating who you're talking to? Are you writing that down somewhere? And are you following up with them? Because you can wait two days or four days or a week and be like, hey, you know, I sent you that voice message. Did you ever get it? Were you able to hear me? That's not bugging someone. That's respecting them and your time and their time. The fact that you reached out to them, you sent them a message. You know, I was like, I, I'll write, were you able to hear me? And they're like, no, I opened it and it wouldn't play. Okay, no problem. Let me type it out for you or let me see what I said and I'll resend it to you. Okay, so don't take because they didn't respond as they're ghosting you or they're annoyed with you or they don't want to talk to you. It's just maybe they or they opened it and they're, they were with their kid and they didn't respond right away and then they forgot about it. So when you're following up, it's respect. It's, you know, it's, it's continuing to make that connection deeper is, is essentially my point. And it doesn't have to be a like, are you ready to join yet? I mean, shoot, Stephanie and I, if you, she took like 10 months to join my team and I didn't even, honestly, I was talking to so many people at that time. Like I didn't even really know, like make the connection of like, we had this conversation and then she, you know, like we just, she would comment on my stuff and she would like my posts and she'd send me like, you know, messages here and there. And I check in on her once in a while because she liked my stuff and I'd just be like, Hey, how you doing? Like, how, how are things going? Not nothing to do with, are you, are you ready to become a coach yet? Are you ready to become a coach yet? Just like a check-in, like, how are you doing? So I think another thing to remember is when you're following up with someone, say you've asked somebody about being a coach 10 months ago and they said, no, it took Stephanie, I think 10 months to a year to say yes. So, you know, you can follow up with them on a personal level. Um, I just had a girl recently, actually, she should be signing up in March. She kept saying, I think I, I shared this on a, another call, like month after month, like to for sure next month, for sure next month. And I was following up with her just like saying, hey, how are you? Like, how are things going? But she kept bringing it back to like the challenge group. She's like, are you starting to be group yet? And then I would say, and then finally this last month, she's like, for sure next month. And she's done this like five months in a row to me. And I just said, you know what? Write yourself a note on your calendar and follow up with me the last week of February and let me know when you're like, you reach out to me and you tell me that you're ready to enroll and we'll get you enrolled in the March group because you've got to take responsibility and ownership for your journey in your life. I'm not here to be like, you know, and I said, until then I'll follow up with you. I'll, I'm, I'm happy to be connected on a personal level. I just don't want to talk about the business anymore. Like I've followed up with you enough times and now like it's on you. And she was like, okay, you know, my calendar is marked. Thank you so much. I'll follow up with you then. And she was having some wisdom teeth pulled or something. So now I've just followed up with her about that. Like, how are you doing? Are, re are you recovering from that on a personal level? Like actually caring about what's going on in their life. Not just like, I want to close the sale. So I'm just going to keep following up with you until you buy because I'm annoying, you know, so you just want me to shut up. So you buy and then you never do anything with it. You know, 
then I I'm curious if you want to talk. Do, um, Marissa, I'm curious what you do if somebody like has reached out to you because like <clears throat> I get people. <clears throat> sorry, I just had peanuts. I'm choking. I have people that reach out and they're like, I'm interested. Tell me more. And it's like, great. Well, you know, I want to help, but you know, tell me a little bit about yourself, blah, blah, blah. And then they like ghost. And so I'm like, well, dude, you reached out to me. So I'll keep checking in like, Hey girl, how are things going? Like, Hey, thanks for reaching out. You know, I'm excited to help you. Um, have you begun doing anything? And so I'm curious, what do you do if you do have someone that's like, I'm interested. And then they ghosted after your first message, how many times would you follow up and what would your follow-ups look like? Well, I guess that goes to the point of what is the first message that you're sending them when they're saying I'm interested. I'm asking about them. I'm like, I'd love to help you out. But first to hear more about what you're doing is going to be helpful. So are you working on goals? Are you wanting to get started? Um, you know, where are you at right now? Okay. So I probably, what I would do is I'd probably follow, like if I, if I wrote them that message and they didn't respond at all, they never responded. Like when I asked them questions, you're saying they never responded to you after that first, okay. Right. Well, they, they reached out to me, I'm interested in your groups, tell me more, and then nothing. And then never responded. I would, what I do is I write like two days, tw within 48 hours, I'll write a question mark, just a question mark. Cause then it's like, it sends them another message. And then if they're like, what? And I'm like, did you, then they'll be like, what? And I'm like, did you receive my message? You know? And then they'll say, um, yeah, I got it. I'm just really busy right now or whatever. And then I'm done. Like over, you know, <laughs> like, no, no, not us. I'm trying to get to like the point as quickly as possible. Like I, I want to want to waste as little amount of my time as possible. I don't chase people. I, you know, you, you said this all the time. I don't chase people. Like now if then they responded and they said something and if, if you can tell intuitively, you can feel if it's like pulling teeth, trying to get somebody to respond to you. It's like, okay, if they're not even having the time to respond to you, they're not going to have the time to actually use the program and <laughs> get the results. And then are they going to have the time to like join your challenge group and actually post in there? And are they going to actually be someone that you could see being a coach on your team? Cause I feel like everyone that you invite to be part of your challenge group should be like, they could be a potential coach on my team because they really could be, you know, and I'm not saying it as in like, I'm going to use them and I want to like, it's, it's more of like, it's a possibility. So if someone is already, they're already showing you who they are. And if they're already showing you that there's someone that takes forever in a day to get back to messages, you don't really want to, you don't want to, you don't want that person. You don't want to chase anyone. That's not what this is business is about. It might get you a sale in the end. You might chase them down to the point where they're finally like, fine, I'm so annoyed with this girl. Let me just buy the shit so that she shuts up. Right. <laughs> but they're not going to do anything with it. So you just made a sale. You made 50 bucks or a hundred bucks or whatever, but really you didn't get anywhere. You see, so you just, it's still like, it doesn't, the money is not going to bring you happiness. Like real, true, authentic connections with people that you can build a relationship with and help are what's going to bring you happiness. I have two people that are recently doing that to me. Somebody that's like, I'm signing up tomorrow. I'm signing up tomorrow. I'm signing up tomorrow. And I was like, girl, I'm not here to have you pay me to get me off your back. If you can't take five minutes to sign up, how are you going to make 20 minutes to work out? And I did say that to two people recently because you're right. I don't want you to sign up to get me off your back because that sucks to have somebody enroll and not do a damn thing. I'm like, I don't want that. And if that's you, then don't sign up. I actually... I had a girl last month too, and she just wanted to do the beach body on demand. She was just going to do like the annual membership. And I was just like, actually she's, she doesn't, <laughs> I re, I'm recording this and she, she's my hairdresser. And she was, I could tell that it's just not, she's not, she's like, you don't understand when I get home, I don't have time to do anything, but she's posting on her Instagram stories, like videos from hair that she did that day when she gets home. <laughs> so I'm like, you don't have five, it takes five minutes to enroll. And I'm like, you know what? I really don't think this is for you. I said it to her. I'm like, I don't think you want to do this. And she's like, last time I went to get my hair like cut or whatever. And she's like, no, it's not that really. It's not that. And I'm like, but when you, when you want to do something, you make time for it, you know? And I was just like, I'm not gonna, I was like, so when you're ready, you reach out to me. I'm not going to follow up with you anymore. Just letting you know, like that's, I'm creating my boundary because it's too much energy to expend to keep following up with someone who isn't really ready to do it, you know? So, I mean, I will never, I'll never like totally, you know, say that I'm not open to her ever doing it. It's just got to be, she's got to lead her. She's got to be the leader of her own life. Kim said that in the, in, in her, 
you know, they need to be the leader in their own life or whatever she said. It was a great analogy that she said. So here's, here's, let's, let's get to, so what do I do? First of all, when I have someone reaching out to me on social media, do you guys ever have people reaching out to you or are you mostly starting the conversations? Okay. Yeah, you do. I'm getting a shaking a no and a shaking of a yes. <laughs> yeah. Just to let you know, I'm just starting to get people to reach out. Some people are reaching out just from like my personal page and stuff asking me what kind of workout should I do? So yeah, I'm just now starting to get that. Okay. So if you don't know these people, if it's cold market, what I do, and I learned this from, I don't, someone else, I, all, I'm going to, I'm going to share all the stuff that I do. And I'm going to tell you that I learned all this stuff from other coaches. Okay. That succeeded in the business. I really like this. So it's, this was from, I think Raina Odell. She says, hi, name. How are you? Once they reach out, thank you for commenting on my post and showing interest in joining my team or my group or whatever, or, you know, learning more about nutrition or fitness or whatever. I would love to have you, but I'd like to get to know you a little better first. Where are you from? Cause on Instagram, they could be from like Mexico and you can't, you know, you can't be their coach. You don't go to Mexico yet. What do you do for a living? And how much time do you think you can realistically devote to working on a healthy lifestyle change each day? I'm looking forward to our connection. So I have this in the notes on my, um, on my phone and I obviously just copy and paste. Hi. And I change the name every time. So this is going to show me where are you from? Can I actually coach them? What do you do for a living? You know, that's, that could be a pain point for them. They, you know, it could open up something knowing about possibly them becoming a coach. It also shows that you're interested in more than just what are your goals, like fitness. It's like, who are you? <laughs> what kind of a person are you? And then what, how much time do you have? Because then that's going to help you pick which program you're going to help them with. So usually, you know, people will, if they're coming back and they're giving you like one, like three, like one word answers, like boom, boom, boom. I'm like, okay, this person's really not that interested in sharing with me. So probably not going to be a great you know customer, but if they're like responding and they're like really engaging with you, then okay, they're interested in me. Like they, if they're doing like three, you know, three one word answers, like boom, 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 most likely that's not going to lead to, you know, a, a relationship. So I already know that like, you're going to get red flags in the process. So don't ignore the red flags. <laughs> you know, it's going to show whether they're really ready to have a relationship with you and do this or not. Don't try to, you know, spit some, a square peg into a round hole. If they're showing you they're not ready, you can still connect with them on a personal level because maybe a year from now they are going to be ready and they're going to be watching you and they're going to make more of a connection with you because they're going to keep following your page for a year. So it's not ever disregarding someone, but it's just knowing where they're at in their, in their process. Okay. So I'll write that, then they'll respond. And I really like, you know, after that, to me, it's very natural, a, a natural process. It's not, I don't have a set you know, set of questions that I ask after that, for me, it's, it's conversational. It's like, okay, how do you like doing what you do? How do you like living where you live? One, or, yeah. Okay. So questions to ask what I liked about Kim, what she wrote in here is there was some questions that she asks and you know, if you didn't listen to that national wake up call, it was really good, but I'm going to, I'm going to reiterate some of the things that she said, because I really liked the way that she presented things and how she created value for her people. So understanding that your client is not a transaction. This is about building a relationship. The better you are at naturally letting this process, you know, work its way through and being natural, like having a conversation with someone, not like, how do I say the right thing so I can get them to enroll? No, like, having a natural conversation that is just unfolding. But here's some questions that she asks. Um, what is your morning routine? What do you typically eat upon rising to noon? And the reason that this is good to ask, and I like that, is it gives you an idea of what they're spending their money on and what their life is like, which is there a lack in their routine? Because this may open up um, opportunities for you to talk about Shakeology. Like maybe they're not eating breakfast in the morning, which you know is one of the most important meals. It sets you up for a great day. And maybe they're spending tons of money on, you know, eating out and, you know, they're going to have a price objection about Shakeology, but it's actually going to save them money in the long run because they're going to have less meals eating out. The other thing she asks is, do you have trouble getting in this? Probably like not all in one. <laughs> Don't take all these questions and put them all in one message and send it. <laughs> okay. 
this is a conversation. So you ask one question, you listen. You ask another question, you listen. You don't take 50 questions and send it to them and expect that someone's going to respond because they won't. Trust me, they, they're going to be like, whoa, this is going to take way too long to answer. And wow, she just copied and pasted that whole thing to me and she didn't even make it personalized at all. And the next question she has is, do you ask is, do you have trouble getting motivated to exercise? Do you find that you're lethargic and tired in the morning? Again, this relates to energy. So Shakeology, think Shakeology, nutrition and energize. So this could do with, you know, your nutritional programs like 21 Day Fix to be mindset and also pre-workout formula energize and Shakeology also gives you sustainable energy. Do you find you get sore easily? So recover is especially good for people that are starting out their journey. It helps them, helps them stay on point and be able to commit to their journey longer because it prevents um, post-workout soreness. So that's a good question to ask. What do you struggle with as far as nutrition? Porsche, you know, this, you're thinking portion control container is a to-be mindset. Do you struggle with emotional eating? Are you training for a competition? I like to ask people, if I'm trying to decide if someone's between to-be mindset or, or um, 21 day fix portion control, I will ask them, so what type of person are you? No, they're not on the team page. These are from the, that national lake up call that I took notes. I'll, I'll, I'll copy and paste it though. But these are from Kim Fitzpatrick's national lake up call. So if you didn't watch it yet, that's where I learned how to be a successful coach, guys. It's, it's, I didn't have a mentor. I didn't have these calls. I didn't have shit. That's what I did. I learned from that. And it brought me so far, just those calls. And obviously listening to other coaches, like I would ask questions and listen. Um, what I like to ask as far as TV mindset and 21 day fix is I, I like to get people on the phone too. So this is usually like an on the phone question, but I could also do it on um, messenger would be, are you the type of person that's going to do better with like a ridiculously controlled where it tells you exactly what to eat, when to eat and exactly the perfect portions? Um, are you going to be better doing that or are you going to be better off with more flexibility? And where you, it tells you what to eat, but you can decide what kind of things you want to eat and, you know, when you want to eat them. And it just kind of teaches you, it teaches you portioning your meals, but it's much more flexible because to be mindset to me is much more flexible. 21 day fix to me is like extremely controlled. So if they're the type of person that's like, I need it to be like extremely controlled. Like I want that, you know, thing. I'm like, okay, man, 21 day fix portion control containers. If there's someone that's like, no, that's going to drive me crazy, which for me it would, I couldn't do like I did 21 day fixed extreme just because I was in the, the coach test group. I did it for 21 days straight, exactly how it was, but that's the only time I ever did portion control containers. <laughs> Sometimes I will use them like once in a while. I'm like, oh, I'm just going to portion this out to see, you know, get it like it actually one serving. But for the most part, I don't because I, that kind of control, and I know Stephanie can't do with that kind of control either, you know, especially people that have had like eating disorders before and stuff like that. It's a problem. So I like the TV mindset better, but I also can't even do like the no carbs after lunch, like for no carbs for dinner. Like it just doesn't work for me. No problem. Like I just do what works for me. But I have had people that say like, no, I want that control. Okay. 21 day fix containers or no, I, I need that more flexibility. Okay. To want to be mindset. Um, and also if someone's really, I feel like if someone really needs really more help with their nutrition, then, um, then fitness, like if it's nutrition first, I would, I would likely probably do to be mindset anyway, just because I feel like that program really teaches somebody how to eat right. I mean, you know, they could still do the containers later and you kind of, you know, mesh them together and make them work out for you. Uh, but if that's, if your focus with them is going to be more nutritionally based then I would probably go with to be mindset. Um, just because I like, the, I don't know if you guys have watched the 30 videos, but I did. And it really teaches you like about nutrition. I mean, it's from a registered dietitian, you know, she knows what she's talking about. Okay. So the only thing about the TV mindset is that you have to figure out how you're going to fit that into the packaging. So you have to work with that as well. Um, and then what is it you need? Like a direct question. Um, the other thing you could ask which, that I liked was, do you snack a lot? Because this opens you up for opportunities to talk about beach bars, obviously Shakeology, and Daily Sunshine. That's a great snack. You can mix it up with water, and it tastes amazing. I don't like the strawberry one. I like the chocolate one. But um, those are all the questions that she asks. And, you know, obviously these go back and forth. And then she 
in the end, once she's like asked them all the questions and gets them to the point where she, she actually invites them again. All right. She says, all right, I think you're ready to change your life, girl. And I really mean this. I never use a line that I do not feel in my soul. I'm so excited for you and can't wait to get this in your hands. Does, and she puts a time frame on it and, and she creates um, fear of missing out. So like, she'll say like, we're, we're kicking off the group, you know, on Monday. So we need to get your enrollment completed by X, Y, Z dates. So you can have all your stuff in time and you will be ready to start with us. And she asks them, are you ready to be a leader in your own life? And I really like that. I think that's cool. I, I really like her style. I think she's a very, she seemed very authentic to me, like a sweet, sweet person that really does have a desire to help people. I really connected with her a lot. I actually wrote her on Instagram and told her great job on, this, on the national wake up call and thanks for all the great information. Um, so I can totally post that, those questions in like my notes, but I do, I have a document, a Google doc in my, um, my Google docs, <laughs> my Google drive. And I keep, I take notes on every national wake up call because um, I feel like there's really value. These people, success leaves clues. These people are like killing this business. You know, they're doing amazing things and they're helping a lot of people and they're, you know, building teams, you know, and that's what I want to do. I want to build a team. So I will listen to what's working for other people. So um, I think it's, I think she did a good job of showing too how you set the expectation from the beginning of, you know, showing them the value of what they're getting and, and, um, getting them set up for success because it truly does start from like your first interaction with them. Not, not, it doesn't even start when they make the, you know, when they pay and enroll, even though that's really when your work begins to coach them. Um, but it actually starts from before that. So anyway, questions about that or shares about that. I love that. Are you ready to be a leader in your own life? Because I usually ask like, you know, is this something that you can see yourself committing to or are you willing to commit to? But I like that question. That's awesome. That's like empowering them. Like, exactly. are you ready to take the, the, yeah, the bull by the horns? And that's what she, she stressed and like the way she asked the questions is she's She's like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, um, there. I don't remember what she said. I'm not there. Um, something I'm their guide. I'm their guide. And the more I can put the, we are not a hero. We are a guide is what she said. The more she can put, um, the like control of what's going on in their hands, the better. So I used to, and then another thing that I like that she shared was, I used to always like, are you selling yourself short? And are you always just thinking like a base challenge pack? Are you always thinking it's just going to be the beach body on a man and Shakeology 160 package? Cause I did used to do that. I used to be like, nobody's going to spend two fourteen or whatever on like the whole beach body on a man transformer, you know, I mean, transformer stuff and Shakeology and the pre-workout and the post whatever, you know, I always would be like, I'd start with a base. You know what? I always enrolled with the base because I, you know, that's what I sold myself as my value. And as of late, when I, I, a lot of times get people on the phone. I, I just do. I still like to talk to people. I don't enroll that many people every month. So for me, it helps me to build, I feel like a deeper connection with someone. If I'm enrolling 10 people or five to 10 people every month, I can get them on the phone for 30 minutes and talk to them or even an hour sometimes. And it helps me get to know who really is this person. So when I'm on the phone with them, um, I share, like, I go through the things. I'm like, all right, first there's, you know, fitness. And I talk about Beach Body On Demand, having that for a year and how you're going to have access to all the programs. And we talk about which program I think is going to be right for them. I mentioned that there's a yoga studio, there's meditation in there, there's dancing, there's cardio, there's weight training. Like they're going to have basically a home gym membership for less than $10 a month. And, you know, they're going to have it for the whole year. And then I tell them, think it's like Netflix but for fitness. So you just pick your program. It has a calendar. It's so simplified. It teaches you exactly what to do, what days you don't have to come up with, you know, workouts in the gym and they're super effective in a short amount of time. Most workouts are, you know, they're 21 days to 90 days. Uh, once you finish one program, you can move on to the next. So 
I talk about that. Then I talk about nutrition and I either talk about the portion control containers or I talk about to be mindset or if they're more just going to do whatever is with the fitness program, most of them are, you know, the containers anyway. So I'll talk about the, you know, when you, when you log into Beachbody on demand, you're going to have access to the, the nutritional plan that comes with the program. So you go into program materials and you click on it and the, you know, all the information for the nutritional plan for that specific program that you're going to do is going to be in there. You follow that, you know, whatever. So I talk about that. And then I, as far as nutrition, I talk about Shakeology and I say, this is something that I drink every day. It's not a protein shake. It is a gap filler. It's something that I drink that helps me feel fuller, more feel fuller longer, more satisfied throughout the day. I have less cravings for junk food and I have more energy from it. That's why I love it. It's got, you know, 70 whole food ingredients, superfoods. It's got 50 to hundred percent of most of your daily vitamins and nutrients. It's not a protein shake and it's very earthy. So I blend it up in a milkshake and I make it taste really good. And I'll give them some examples of like how I make my shakeology. Like I'll be like the chocolate with like a half a banana and some peanut butter and some almond milk and maybe even throw some spinach in there because you can't really taste it. So that's what I talk about with the nutrition. And I usually do ask them about their energy levels because I always want to keep that opening up for most people don't have energy. That opening is for you to talk about Shakeology and the importance and stress. For me, it really was the energy that really I loved about the Shakeology. I mean, I love everything about it, but the energy was really key. And then I talk about, um, obviously, the support and accountability. And she, it's funny that she says this is the magic. Like her, she said, this is the magic because I always say the magic happens in, inside the group. Like that's where you get the support and accountability that you need. The more you engage in the group, the more support and accountability you get from the other people. And it only works if you work it. So, um, I talk about the fact that it's not just they're getting coaching from me, but they're also getting that accountability from their fellow challengers. And then they're starting to get to know each other and they make friends. And it's just a super supportive online community of women who lift each other up and are all doing these programs together. So you're doing it by yourself, but you're not doing it alone. Um, so I talk about that and I really stress the accountability and I really stress the fact that the group is where the magic happens. Um, because maybe that's not going to be something that's going to be for them. And maybe this community isn't going to work for them. If they're not going to engage in the group, I feel like the products, they're only going to work for so long. I think that the group is what keeps people actually, you know, engaged in their journey and having long-term success with the products. Um, so I talk about that and then I'll talk about, you know, and then there's optional and I do use these pre-workout and post-workout. So the pre-workout, it's literally just to give you energy for your workout in the morning. So I do a half a scoop before I work out and, and, you know, I don't know that much about it. I just know that I like it <laughs> because I really don't know that much about it. <laughs> I don't want to go into all the details about what's in it or, you know, the labels. Go ahead. Real quick. That, that made me laugh because like I freaking love the taste of recover. I don't really know what it's done for me. I gotta be honest, but I love it. And to me, it's like, sometimes it pushes me through a workout. Cause I'm like, I get to have recover if I push really hard, but I like it. I know what it's supposed to do, but I can't say that I, I notice a physical or any other difference. I just really freaking like it. So that made me laugh. So <laughs> I know. I don't know. I mean, I can send them nutritional labels if they want to see what it looks like. And I will say that. I'm like, if you want more information, I can send you labels and you can do the research. I'm like, I just, it doesn't give me sustainable energy. It just gives me the energy to do my workout. I use that when I work out. And then the post-workout, I like the orange recover. And I'm like, I'm a weirdo. Most people like the chocolate, but I just like it. You know, it gives me something quick to get down right after my workout. And, you know, it's supposed to reduce soreness. I don't know if it really does that for me. I just like it. It's like an extra, you know, protein source, whatever. So then, like, I did that with my most recent, I think my most recent enrollment. And she was like, I've, originally, she was kind of like just wanting the workouts. And then she's kind of like, oh, well, that Shakeology sounds good. And then she's like, well, what about, like, I was about to, you know, enroll her with the, like, 160 package, the base pack. And she's like, well, what about the pre and post workout? And I'm like, well, you didn't say you were interested in that. And she's like, yeah, I want it all. I'm like, okay. So I sent her, like, the package for the, you know, it's like almost $300, you know. It, um because that's what she wanted. She wanted the whole thing. It wasn't me like convincing her that you need this pre-workout or this post-workout. I share what I do, what I use, what works for me and why I like it. And if they connect with that, at the end of presenting all of that, I usually say, so what of that do you really like? What of that do you really connect with? And they're like, oh, you know, I really like the workouts or the Shakeology or I want it all or whatever it is. 
And then we focus on, and I'm like, cause I can build your package any way you, any way you like. And so then we focus on like building their package to the things that they want. And some people it's just speech body on demand and that's fine. I'm not going to sit here and convince them that they need to do pre-workout or post-workout. I might say, well, I really think that this is going to help you, but you know, I'm not going to, and I'm not going to like not accept them in my group if they don't do a challenge pack, which I used to do. <laughs> Um, something I just want to share real quick on that, like, cause I know as new coaches, it is scary to be like $160 and it's really like, you know, our own fears, not necessarily that of somebody else, but like I had a new coach, um, that enrolled someone and she enrolled her with the $99, but the person shared, she really struggled with nutrition and she struggled because she's got 12 hour shifts and she's like 60, 40 right now. And she was afraid to push the package because she was like, well, I don't want to feel like I'm selling. I'm like, but we're here to help. And, you know, basically she was having problems with nutrition. And what happened is we got her, you know, enrolled with the workouts, but it's like pushing what's going to help isn't like, that's not selling just to get money. Like I want to help someone. And if I'm hearing that you struggle with nutrition, you bet your butt. I'm going to like talk about Shakeology and the containers. And I'm going to make it known that if you don't have those things, you may not get the same results and I'm here to help you. So I want you to have all tools. And she even shared that she was interested in Shakeology, but she might do that down the road. Um, and again, that's doing a disservice if they have interest, but you're not starting them off because that's how they get the best price. I mean, I actually share it that it's, included in your first month. I don't take away from the fact that I do a lot for my groups. And so you're getting, you know, one year of on demand and you're getting, you know, the containers and Shakeology is included. And then you get my help and my support and that of others. But, you know, wanting to start off with all things is not, I'm just trying to make a dollar. It's, I want them to get to their goals. And if they just have a workout, it's probably not going to happen if they're struggling with nutrition. So that's just my two cents on enforcing why you want someone to have all things to get to all goals. I, I agree. I agree. And, but, and I also gonna say like a side note, if someone is really adamant about like, no, I don't want the whole thing. And I do, I do explain like you're getting a super deal by getting them all together at first. And then they, they're like adamant about like, no, I just want to start with that. I'm not going to argue with them. I'm just going to get them started with that. I'm going to get them in the group. They're going to see everybody else drinking Shakeology. They're going to see everybody else, you know, getting results with the nutrition and, and sharing about things. And they're going to, they'll probably eventually enroll with it anyway, because they're actually going to see. So, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. I mean, if someone even, you know, a great place to start for someone that's really hesitant about doing this is the clean week. Like you go over everything and they're like, I'm not ready. Um, to spend $214 on a challenge pack or to spend $160 or $284, or whatever it is. But you know, this does sound like something I want to do down the line. I, I would say, well, you know what, if you really want to try it out and you, you didn't, you're not ready to invest that much yet, there is clean week where you're going to get access to the clean week each by on demand, you know, for as long as you, for as forever, you'll get seven days worth of Shakeology. I think you get like all flavors and vegan and all flavors or all flavor flavors and regular for like $29.95 or something. Right. So I can enroll them for that and they can try all the shakes, try the beach body on demand, see if they like it first and then decide if they want to enroll with the, and, and I have, I had a, a, a woman at work who's like in her early sixties and I just drink my Shakeology every day, you know, and <laughs> I, I do GI. So I'm in there with my Shakeology, you know, and whatever, whatever. And she's like, she asked me about it and asked me how it tastes. And I was kind of sharing a little bit about it with her. And she was like, you know, can I like try it? Are there like samples or something? I was like, you can do the clean week. I was like, you can do the Shakeology, you know, um, you could do a starter pack for like $20. I think it's $19.95. You can get like four or five packets of shake. I don't know exactly the numbers, right? But I can look at my Beachbody Links app and I can figure it out right away. So I'll look at my Beachbody Links app and I'll say, for shake, you know, just the Shakeology, you can get this or that or whatever. And I'm like, or if you want to do workouts with it, you can get the clean week with it and it's $29.95 and you'll, you know, you'll be able to do the workouts and you'll get like seven days worth of Shakeology. She's like, yeah, do that. So she did that. 
she started the clean week. She liked it. It was good. She's, you know, she's older. So her body's not as like fit. You know, she hasn't been active for like several years. She really liked the shakes. She didn't like all the flavors, but she found, you know, a way that she liked some of the flavors. And, you know, like a week or two later, she just went online and enrolled for the 160 challenge pack without even talking to me. It wasn't even like, hey, I like it, I want to upgrade. I just like went into my online office and I'm like, ooh, I have a new order. Oh, two successful points. Oh, sweet. <laughs> Marcella ordered the challenge pack and then I saw her at work like the next Monday or it, I was gonna text her that night and I'm like, no, I'll just see her at work. So she's a nurse. I came in, I'm like, oh, so you got the, you know, you really like the clean week, huh? And she's like, yeah, and I'm like, so she's like, I'm doing 21 day fix now. She's like, well, she's all excited. She's, she's telling everyone in the room about it, telling everyone how much she loves her Shakeology, whatever, whatever. She's like promoting it for me <laughs> to other people at work. And, um, and she's really happy and she doesn't want to be in the challenge group. I'm like, you know, do you want to do the online accountability group? She's like, no, I'm like, okay. She's very happy with just like doing her 21 day at home her 30 minutes, getting her exercise in and bringing her shakes. And, you know, I'm not going to force her either to be in the group because she's already, she's doing what she needs to do. So, you know, it's, it's not, <laughs> I don't know. It's just, it's when you, when you let things unfold naturally, the business becomes really easy and like natural to you and it feels good. And it never feels like you're pressuring people or you're selling or you're trying to get people to buy because it's just, it's something that you love that's working for you and you're just sharing what's working for you and you're helping people get the same results. So yeah, <clears throat> I actually, for the first time, felt really natural with the Shakeology stuff because, you know, somebody had signed up. They wanted to sign up with the, um, just the workouts. Yeah, I'm just going to do the workouts. And, you know, I was like, well, you know, the portion control goes with that. I'll get you some, you know, cups, too, to send to you to do the portion control. Okay, that's fine. So that's 110, whatever. And then I was done with my conversation, but then I sat there and I thought about it. I'm like, oh, my gosh, for 50 bucks, they can get the Shakeology that is that is a huge value i mean when you're paying 130 a month or something like you know normal price for that and it just felt so natural for me to reach back out to them and i'm like listen you know shakeology is great i drink it every day and for an extra 50 dollars, you're going to get an amazing value because this stuff is really you know this expensive per month they're like yeah send me the shakeology i've been wanting to try it they're like two weeks in and they love it they're like, I love the Shakeology. And so, you know, I'm sharing with them how I, they can get a discount if they continue drinking it. If you drink it for at least six months a year, you know, I can get you a discount. But for the first time, it felt so natural to extend that option to somebody because really it is an amazing value, you know, and, it, and they signed up. They, I, maybe they felt the naturalism of it. I don't know. But they were like, yeah, yeah, send it. So... And, and that's, and that's understanding the value of what it is that you're offering them. Like $214 for the step and all the like sex accessories that come with T20 and shake out a month supply of Shakeology and, you know, a year of beach body on demand. They're, what, usually when I tell them and about the accountability group and my coaching and everything for a year, usually when I tell them there are, they're like, Oh shit, they think it's going to be like so much. They're like, Oh my God, how much is this? And when I tell them the price, they're like, Whoa, that's it. Because imagine you're getting a home gym membership <laughs> for a year, plus the coaching, plus the shakes, plus the, you know, it's like, it really is very, very reasonably priced, but you have to understand that you, you know, you're offering them, you have to understand your value when you're offering it. Or if you're hesitating and you're feeling insecure and you're scared, they're going to feel that. And that's what is going to be a no. But if you're confident, it's all about your level of confidence with sharing and in order to have that level of confidence, you have to know the value of what you're offering people. And that comes with using it yourself every day. <laughs> so you know like how much it's changed your life and seeing it change other people's lives and engaging in the community that you have available to you. And also, you know, if you need more, if you need more evidence, then go online and figure it out. Like search for results of Transform 20 and look at them and be like, holy shit, wow, yeah, people are getting amazing results. Whatever it is that you need to do to gain more confidence, to know what the value is of what you're offering, do that. Also, I just want to say um, that Kim Fitzpatrick call, I did the same thing. I put the questions in my notes and I have been asking people that. I love the specific, how specific the questions are because a lot of times when I ask people about their nutrition, they're just like, yeah, I eat healthy somewhat, <laughs> you know, instead of like, what do you eat upon rising till noon? 
that is very specific. What is your morning routine? Right. And so we can draw out more specific things so you can get more specifically to their pain point instead of like, yeah, I kind of eat healthy. Well, what does that mean? What exactly are you eating? So right. her the questions she uses are super specific and I love that. Okay. I like it too. So, all right, ladies. Well, thanks for all your shares and your questions and all that stuff. I hope this, you found this valuable. Does anyone have any last words before we hop off here? No, I thought Marty was getting ready to say something, but no. Okay. All right. Well, thanks a lot, Stephanie, always for sharing. And Melissa, thanks for engaging with us. And I hope you guys have an awesome Saturday. See ya.